It is the riots on Radio U, 8772 Radio U. We've got a special guest on the show this morning. Uh, we've got, uh, I guess we'll put it as a, it's a dietitian, a dietitian, Taylor. Uh, her name is Taylor Grosso. Taylor, how would you describe yourself? A uh, registered dietitian. That's that's exactly what I would describe. So I think people get a little bit confused, though. Registered dietitian is different than a nutritionist. So I would I get confused by this. We're already confused. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What Everybody is the difference? By that. So registered dietitian is a regulated term. Um, essentially, you have to get you have to pass a board exam in order to become a registered dietitian. So there's also now a master's degree requirement as well. So you've got to get a bachelor of science. You've got to get a master of science. And then you also have to take a board exam. That's how then you get your RDN credential. So a registered dietitian nutritionist nutritionist. There is no regulation around that. So you may have like a master's degree in nutrition and call yourself a nutritionist, but you could also take a week long course online and then call yourself a nutritionist, which is why it can be kind of a scary term because people can call themselves nutritionists and give advice online, even if they have like a week of training. So mm. <laughs> if it's a registered dietitian, though, you know, they've done a bachelor's, a master's, and they have been, they have taken the board exam in order to achieve that credential. Taylor, I haven't taken any courses and I give people advice all the time. So. <laughs> <laughs> We're glad you're here yes. to help us because we get the we get the pro of the pro. Yes, this is this is real info. So people can follow you. We found you uh, at Simply Health RD on your socials. And one of the things I saw uh, that you talking about recently is that mm -hmm. as a dietitian, you actually tend to not recommend people cut carbs. Uh, mm -hmm. way down, which is uh, obviously a trendy thing for people to do. So I mm -hmm. feel like uh, I want to hear you let people know, explain why you actually don't recommend cutting carbs out. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of confusion around this whole cutting carbohydrates thing. I think that people don't understand the nuances of what carbohydrates actually are. Because when we talk about carbohydrates, like fruits and vegetables are carbohydrates. Beans are carbohydrates. There's a lot of really nutrient dense foods that contain carbohydrates. And where we also get confused is the fact that all carbs break down into sugar in their simplest form. So when people are out here saying like, cane sugar is worse for you than maple syrup. It's like in the simplest form, they're both going to break down into glucose. What is different about the way that carbohydrates can kind of impact the body is what I like to say the package that they come in. So when we're talking about carbohydrates, there's kind of two categories. There's complex carbohydrates and then there's simple carbohydrates. Complex carbohydrates are going to contain more fiber and typically more protein. That's things like whole grains, fruits and vegetables, and also like beans, legumes, those types of things as well. These types of carbohydrates are the ones that we want to emphasize and add into our diet more often because with these types of carbs, they're going to have less of an impact on our blood sugar. So when we talk about blood sugar, that's a very trendy thing that people talk about as well, right? Mm -hmm. Balancing out your blood sugar is something that's going to give you more energy, keep you more full, keep you more satisfied. Like, have you ever experienced that like 3 p.m. crash where you want to reach for a coffee or an energy drink before? Every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You probably actually need food. So that's a sign and a signal that your blood sugar is dropping. A lot of people miscommunicate that with, oh, I need another little caffeine hit. But what that's likely going to do is just cause you to have that like energy spike and then you crash like an hour later. I'm sure you've all experienced that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, in terms of this whole carbohydrate thing, I think where people are missing the mark is not that we need to cut carbs. It's more so that we need to add more of these complex carbs into our diets rather than some of those more simple carbohydrates. So those simple ones are not bad. I don't call any foods good or bad because food doesn't have moral value. But what they do is they're a lot more impactful on our blood sugar. So they can cause like a quick spike and a quick fall, kind of relate it back to like a sugar rust, a sugar rush that you've seen a child, right? Like we always say that they get that big old spike of energy when they eat a bag of candy and then 20 yeah. minutes later they're crashed to sleep on the couch. That's a like blood sugar spike and fall. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly, exactly. So that's more so what we're trying to avoid when it comes to carbohydrates because that's gonna leave you feeling hungry. You're not gonna feel satisfied. You're gonna probably keep reaching for just more of that candy to try to keep getting that spike and fall. So what we're missing the mark on is that we want to emphasize more complex carbohydrates and maybe minimize some of these more simple carbohydrates, or if we are eating those simple carbohydrates, eating them after a balanced meal, or if we're eating them with like a snack, for example, pairing them with some sort of protein, fat, and or fiber to kind of help balance that out. 
and balance those blood sugar levels. So I think there's just a big miscommunication of like what carbohydrates actually are and how they actually impact your body in different ways. Hey, more carbs sound good for me. Yeah. I can tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> but also on, on your Instagram, it seems as if you're definitely, and even in that statement right there, you're definitely mm -hmm. a person who wants people to sometimes do a little bit more addition versus restriction is something I saw you uh, posting on there. And one of my favorite videos you posted was a video of you putting peanut butter on toast, talking mm -hmm. about how adding more now can help you not overindulge later. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit yep. about how, how a lot of people are trying to restrict themselves so much to where later on they end up just completely messing up the diet because at yep. midnight they're craving everything? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna put this in the format of a conversation that I have with a lot of clients that I work with. So I'll ask them what a typical day of eating looks like for them. A lot of the times they're fasting because that's also something that's trendy right now. So it's like, I'll get up, I'll go to do my workout, I'll have a cup of coffee or a glass of tea because that's all I'm allowed to have in the morning. I'll maybe have a salad with some chicken for lunch. I'll have a little snack in the afternoon. However, then I get home from work and I want to eat everything in the kitchen sink. Like I want to eat my entire pantry. I want to eat my entire <laughs> yes. fridge. And typically you're craving more of those like salty, sweet, carbohydrate dense foods, right? And so all of this kind of goes back to what I was just talking about in terms of that blood sugar balance. Our brain's main source of energy is actually carbohydrates. So your brain needs about 130 grams of glucose per day in order to function optimally. So then you throw like exercise, daily movement, and all of that stuff on top of it, which is also we use carbohydrates for that form of energy as well. When we're using this many carbs, but we're skipping them early on in the day, that's going to lead to us craving them at night. And that's typically going to lead to us reaching for more of those simple carbohydrates because we want, like I said, we want that quick rush of energy, right? Mm -hmm. Our brain is like, holy cow, I need some glucose. You haven't given me any all day. And now I have access to cake and cookies or ice cream or chips or salty sweet snacks that you have in your pantry. So then that's what you're reaching for because your body is wanting that glucose. And I think a lot of people get really scared when I say adding to your meals or snacks because they've been conditioned to be like, the lowest calorie option is the best option, right? Like that's what we've been conditioned yep, to think. Right. But the reality is, is when you're always choosing that low cal option, the likelihood that when you give yourself permission and access to these more calorically dense or sugary foods, you're probably gonna end up overeating or overindulging them. One, because of that negative perception and relationship that you have with them. And then two, because your body just simply hasn't had enough energy. So when we can kind of balance out our snacks and our meals by adding to them with complex carbs, protein, fiber, color, all of those types of things, that's where then we have those more balanced and sustained energy and blood sugar levels. And like every woman that I work with is so terrified. I primarily work with women. I know you guys are both men. I'm sure there's plenty <laughs> of men who experience this too. But I primarily work with women and a lot of them, when we first start adding like breakfast, for example, that'll be a first small addition. They're like, my cravings at night have already minimized. And a lot of that just has to do with the way in which that impact has on those hunger, fullness and satisfaction cues. Beautiful. Yeah. More snacks. I'm with that. I'm yeah. with adding yeah. peanut butter now. Uh -huh. That way I'm not doing the cake later. Yep. Yep. Exactly. And the thing is too, what I try to explain to people is it feels scary to like add more calories at meals and snacks because of that conditioning. But the likelihood that you're going to end up eating more total calories, even though you feel like you barely ate that day is really high because those foods that you're reaching for at night, they're going to be very calorically dense, right? Like those more sugary, those more right. salty snacks. Typically those are going to be you can eat a lot more of them because they taste really good and they're typically more calorically dense. So if you can kind of add more of that nutrient density earlier in your day while not restricting those foods that you love, but kind of creating that balance between those two things, you're probably actually going to end up eating less total throughout the course of the day. I feel like we've learned a lot. I wish we had more time. Taylor, thank you so much uh, for coming on with us and obviously much more to cover. Where can people find you? Where's the best place to find you so they can learn more? Yeah. So I'm active on both TikTok and Instagram at Simply Healthy RD is my handle. And then I also have a podcast called Simply Balance with Taylor Grosso. Talk all things nutrition, life, balance, all the things. So those are the two main places or three main places to find me. Perfect. And the podcast is good. I listened to the recent episode Thank that you, you put down, like the third one that talked about 
uh, how you need to be eating more than 1,200 calories. And we talked about that yeah. here too today, which we 100% agree with. We're all for eating more calories. We're with yeah, that. That's right. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you guys for having me. It's been fun. Yes. Thank you so much, Taylor. It is the riot.